This is the Maya, a Tier 6 Japanese premium cruiser. It is a heavy cruiser of the Takao class, and it has 16 torpedoes that you can get in the water if you can maneuver around and do that. And it also has eight 8-inch eight guns, which can deliver devastating performance results against red team cruisers. So you want to look out for that, and you will see some of that in the highlight video. So with that, let's check out the setup of the ship and the commander, who is Yamamoto. And here I went with a sort of hybrid accuracy build. It's not a complete accuracy build, and you'll see what I mean by my inspirations. Right through is the base trait, which approves the cruiser's armor-piercing shell penetration multiplier. And then here I went with kind of a hidden uh, skill inspiration here with Ivan B. Delightful, which will improve the cruiser's main battery reload time, but the detectability after firing the main guns is reduced by 10% here. And then Lemonier also uh, decreases the cruiser's detectability after firing the main guns by another 20%. So that's a 30% decrease in detection time after firing the main guns here. I'm sort of trying this out on Yamamoto and uh, you'll see what the results are in the highlight video. Beyond range is the first skill, uh, improves the cruiser's main battery range. Then here igniter, chances of the cruiser's HE shells causing a fire is improved. Punch through. Cruiser's main battery, a gun armor piercing shell damage and penetration multiplier is improved. And then I went with fixated, which approves a cruiser main battery shell grouping and its main battery dispersion. Legendary skill is refill station, which approves a cruiser main battery reload time by another 7%. Special effect is an improvement of the cruiser's main battery range, and that is when you're within 2.75 kilometers of an allied ship here at legendary rank three if you rank him out at legendary four that goes up to three and a half kilometers all right let's check out the upgrades and the traverse speed of the main guns was rather slow so i went with main battery mod 2 to improve the main battery traverse speed then here i went with propulsion mod 2 to kind of uh, get a good acceleration. If I went with steering gears, that would just be too much of a lag time, I thought. So acceleration is improved by 50%. Then I went with concealment system mod one here. Detectability range is improved by 10%. And incoming fire dispersion is improved by another 5%. And that doubles up on your fully upgraded camo or skin. Loadout, you have your normal ammunition of high explosive shells armor piercing shells and torpedoes, which we will get into in a minute. Consumables, damage control party, duration is five seconds, reloads every 60 seconds, and there's an unlimited number of those consumables. Second consumable is either the sonar or the defensive AA fire. I went with the sonar. Torpedo detectability is 3.3 kilometers. Ships is 4.7 kilometers. Duration is 98 seconds with 180 second reload time and there are two of those consumables. Then I went with a main battery reload booster rather than the fighter consumable. Main battery uh, reload speed is approved by 50% here when the consumable is running. It runs for 15 seconds, reloads every 120 seconds, and there are two of those consumables. There are also two repair party consumables, which will partially restore the ship's HP by repairing any light damage at the rate of 195 hit points per second. Duration is 28 seconds, reloads every 80 seconds, and as far as the boosters go, I'm not running any boosters right now, but that could change depending on the match. Ship does come with a Type 9 premium permanent camouflage. Sea detectability and incoming fire dispersion is 4.5% respectively. Specs survivability hit points is 39,200. Armor is 6 to 127 millimeters with a 19% torpedo damage reduction. Artillery, you have 8 203 millimeter 8 inch guns. Range is 16.4 kilometers. Reloads every 14.9 seconds. And a traverse time, even with the upgrade, and upgrade slot number one is still 25 seconds, which is not really all that great. And that was uh, one main reason I did not consider an agile build. The traverse time was just too slow. HE shells have a maximum of 3,000 with a 20% chance of setting fire. Armor piercing has a maximum of 5,170. Then you have secondary armaments here that reach out to 4.5 kilometers. 
And then uh, the torpedoes. Wow, you have four quadruple torpedo launches, 16 torpedoes in total. They reload every 120 seconds. Maximum damage is pretty big time at 20,967. Range is eight kilometers and the speed is 76 knots, which is pretty good. AA defenses, uh, you could possibly clear the sky a little bit here with the Maya. Maneuverability, maximum speed is 35 and a half knots. Turning circle radius is 780 meters. Rudder shift time is 10.1 seconds. Concealment, detectability range by sea is 10.3 kilometers. Range by air is 6.4 kilometers. And if you're firing in a smoke, it's 6.7 kilometers. Armor, okay, this is, uh, yeah, uh, whatever the armor looks like, do not go broadside against battleships and even other cruisers here. Let's, whoops, let's check out the Citadel. And there is quite a bit above the water. Looks like it's 34 to 75 millimeters. And yeah, if you do the wrong thing out in the open water, you will get removed very easily. And yeah, very, uh, well, I, it's about what I would expect for a cruiser. Let's put it that way. Uh, don't go broadside and against battleships and even other cruisers. Overview, sure shot. Shells with a good ballistic trajectory maintain velocity, making aiming easier. And yeah, the ship is pretty accurate and aiming is pretty easy out there in a standard match. There's no doubt about that. Big yield, above average torpedo damage, and that is true at over 20,000 uh, damage per torpedo. And yeah, the ship can be equipped with the main battery reload booster, and that does come in handy. So then the Maya is a Takao class heavy cruiser. At the height of World War II, the ship underwent a massive refit that involved the removal of one main battery turret and a substantial reinforcement of her anti-aircraft capabilities. Entered service in 1932, and there were four ships in the series. All right, well, that's it for the setup of the ship and the commander. Let's go out in a standard battle and uh, check out some highlights. All right, here we go. We are in fault line, so we're going to check out the teams. Three destroyers per side, Graf Spee, Pensacola, Mayoko, Bayern, Dunkirk, and Colorado on the other team. And sort of the same lineup with uh, cruisers, destroyers, and battleships on the blue team. So the Maya will be available in the store starting September 11, 2023. And you'll get, be able to get the ship by itself, which is normally... 12,500 doubloons. Normally the pricing is going to be the same as a normal tier 6 premium ship. And the XXL packages are always right around $100 or so. So if the ship interests you, go ahead and check it out in the store starting September 11, 2023. Uh, from the time of the recording of this video, that will be next Monday. And here I am checking out the teams again. And yeah, so the ship has a potential of 16 torpedoes in the water at any one time. But if you try to focus on that and make that happen, you do um, take away quite a bit of the gameplay of the ship. I was uh, basically trying to do that with the Yoshino back when uh, that ship came out. I was focusing on trying to get huge torpedo hits at long range and... That never worked out for me. I think I could have used the Azure Lane Commander Otago, which simply is not available. Uh, I was not able to get it when it was available, and that's not even an option here. So I purposely, for this ship, went with a historical commander, which is Yamamoto, and I specifically went with an accuracy build as much as I could. Uh, plus, you know, to uh, go hidden after you fire the main guns in a relatively short amount of time. Here is a Mahan, Mahan, and they started to fire on us even though 
We are in a smokescreen and here looks like the battle is going to be over with pretty darn quickly because I am backing up but these torpedoes so here I'm hitting the island and that torpedo is going to come and nail me it looks like it's only going to be one and check this out wow just uh, missed it by that much uh, I guess World of Warships Legends is also a game of inches so that was pretty darn close I should probably make a short out of that and uh, yeah wow so I'm very cautious about whether I want to get back out there or not um, I'm glad that my teammate started the smoke screen there for me uh, at first I didn't realize it but then I saw the outline and I'm like hey that is a smoke screen and here is a Mayoko that's just sitting broadside and we're gonna check out the armor piercing capabilities here of the Maya against broadside cruisers all these cruisers the Pensacola and the Mayoko are just going to be going broadside and here I'm aiming a little bit up because it looks like the Pensacola is angled out a little bit and there are three citadels right there right on the nose that is awesome Just trying to make a quick turnaround it looks like yeah we might be able to get some citadel action while he's going on the other side there so there I try to blind fire. We'll see if we do get a hit. But yeah, three Citadel hits. We're up to 24,000 damage. 12 main gun hits, though. A lot of those could have been ricochets. And here's a Mayoko going totally broadside. This is a bad deal for the Mayoko right here because uh, he's going to get completely obliterated. There's five more Citadel hits. And that's what I was saying earlier in the setup of the ship is the Maya with this setup completely devastates opposing cruisers like this check that out and I did use the main battery reload booster there to finish off the Mayoko after my initial salvo we have 10 Citadel hits right off the bat 62,000 damage all within the first four minutes of the match so uh, yeah, the ship can really dish it out if you go the armor piercing route. And it seems pretty accurate. This looks like uh, another freebie right here, but he gets taken out by my teammate. So now we're going to go up against the Pensacola. And he is taken out. So uh, my teammates are totally on the ball here, uh, taking everybody out for me. Well, for the team. And we are going to march, or going to try to march, way over to sea and capture sea. It looks like from the minimap, that is where the remainder of the ships are pretty much huddled around. Uh, minus one right there, the Dunkirk went down. So four red team ships left. And we are just going to march over there as quick as we can. Yeah, in a lot of my previous battles, the normal thing would happen where, you know, one match I got caught out in the open water and got obliterated pretty quick once everybody started focusing me. So uh, keep in mind that the Maya does not last very long out in the open once uh, you get a few of the red team ships coming at you. So if you play smart and don't play overly aggressive and you're <laughs> You're going to see me play overly aggressive toward the end of the match here. And um, yeah, I can just imagine people thinking like, what are you doing? Because you've got a clear win and uh, you're pushing it. And yeah, well, I am pushing it because I'm trying to get a highlight video here. And at that uh, stage in the match, which you will see in a few minutes, uh, we clearly have a win. So... Uh, I was taking a chance for a highlight video, and if it works out, you're a hero. If it doesn't work out, uh, you're not so much a hero. So uh, we'll just have to wait for a few minutes and um, see what happens. So yeah, I was checking out the teams to check out the destroyer on the red team. And it's going to be a bit of a cruise by the time we get there. All right, so now I'm turning in this direction because from judging where the red team ships are from their 
uh, icons on the minimap, I think I'm going to be able to engage the red team ships sooner rather there i'm checking the the range again i can't believe it's only 16.4 kilometer main gun range but um i'm figuring that i could engage the red team ships as quickly as possible by going through this channel here and in a few minutes uh you're going to see the red team ships pop up there's the colorado and I think eventually I'm going to hit him with the torpedo to get a gauge of which direction he's moving in. And that's kind of a good thing to do at uh, long range anyway. So there you can see that I went the wrong direction to try to get the Colorado. But this is good if I want to hit the Colorado with some sneak torpedoes as he emerges from the other side of the island here. And that's basically what the plan, the new plan is, is to come around here. And ooh, there is a Graf Spee, and unfortunately he is slowing down because that would be another great surprise torpedo target right there is that guy. And eventually, spoiler alert, we are going to get into it with both of these guys. And this is what I'm talking about, pushing it when I have a for sure win. Really have no need to go after these guys, but now I'm detected by sonar from the Graf Spey and um, yeah he's got me spotted anyway so there I take a shot on the uh, aiming indicator and another rack of torpedoes goes way behind the aiming indicator because I believe that is where the battleship will go or perhaps the Graf Spee will um, turn to avoid some of these uh, excessive torpedoes coming in his direction and uh, he's going to get hit by my second rack of torpedoes that I aimed hoping to get this battleship over here. So now I've got both the ships, the Graf Spey and the Colorado, and I'm like, what did I get myself into? Because this is like sort of, uh, well, it's bad. This is why a lot of people lose a lot of games, I think, because they try to do stuff like this. And, um, well, we're going to see how this turns out. But here, if you're paying attention, you'll see that I actually do get all 16 torpedoes in the water during this engagement and the Graf Spee is gone. And now, unfortunately, these torpedoes are going to hit the dead hulk of the Graf Spee. And it would have been nice if they would have hit the Colorado. Would have helped me out a little bit. But here, the smoke in between myself and the Colorado is helping me out because he cannot see me. There, the secondary battery starts going. And that is a ship I don't see. I guess I'm kind of assuming... Uh, that it is still shooting at the Colorado um, four and a half kilometers away. I was closer than that prior to that when those secondaries were going off. So this Colorado is not going to be around much longer. And uh, yeah, he can see me now. So I'm going to try to get him as uh, like one last shot here. But he can easily take me out with only 3,600 hit points left. So, and he is aiming at me, so, so this is like bad news. Am I going to get the, the guns to go? Uh, I got the guns to go right at the last minute and took him out shortly after he took me out. So uh, in the end, it was a total success as far as I could tell. And that was a big time victory for the Maya. 511,000 credits on 88,000 battle performance total damage on 47 main gun hits. Two torpedo hits, three destroyed ships. We uh, got a third of the red team, a couple floodings, a fire, 10 citadel hits. So that is a big time performance on the armor piercing main battery of the Maya. A couple defendeds, assisted captured. So yeah, we did pretty well there. Let's go ahead and check out the team result. Whoa, 2600 XP, first place overall. That is a good match in the Maya. Wow. Okay, let's check out the economy tab. And really, it was just at the beginning and the end of the battle that we got all the action done. Uh, a lot of chasing down to sea there toward the end. And on the economy tab, look at that. We cleared 438,000 credits by the time it was all said and done. And that is without any boosters. It's just with premium bonuses and whatever kind of fleet bonus that I have set up here. So, wow. 
All right, well, there you go. That's it for the Maya. It's a pretty good tier six premium cruiser if you play it smart and uh, you don't rush out there and get blown out by the opposing team. Nothing else, you get to see a little bit about what the ship is all about. Let me know what you think down below. This is the Jaguar and I'll see you on the high seas. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you like it.